everybody. So I thought it might be useful to show you how I make a sketch in Inkscape. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, import a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my import bitmap or SVG image dialog. And let's see. Yeah, this is a good one. And here I'm going to link rather than embed. And using my selection tool, I'm going to grab my image here. I'm going to hold down control and size it up. The reason I hold down control is because I want to constrain the proportions of the image that I'm going to upload. So I'm going to go into um, path now because I want to take the silhouette and I want to make it into a path. This is a photo right now, but I want to make it into a vector based um, path. So I go into path and choose trace bitmap. And here I'm going to use brightness cutoff. And when I update, usually it would show a um, preview here, but for some reason, on this particular machine running XP, it never gives me the preview, so I just sort of have to guess. So when I click on update, it would normally give me a preview. I'm not seeing the preview, but this is a pretty simple thing to trace. So I'm going to say OK. Then it gives me this preview. I'm going to close, and as a result, what I have here is the original photo, which I can delete now, and this path. How do I know that it's a path? First of all, it says down here that's a path made up of 86 nodes. I can also use my node tool and see what the nodes look like. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a calligraphic uh, brush. And I'm going to switch from my mouse to a Wacom tablet. And because it, it's going to make it easier for me to uh, work. And grabbing this, I'll just see what that pen looks like. It's not really what I want. I'd rather have this brush, which has a much nicer sort of effect there. So I'm going to undo all those marks. And I'm going to more or less just scribble with a couple different colors over this figure like so. Maybe I'll grab a nice um, orange. Whoops. It doesn't matter too much that I'm doing the uh, orange first. It wasn't too important that it was one particular color. What I'm trying to do is make just sort of a fiery, active, internal uh, set of marks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the marks with the uh, figure. So let's see, I'll grab a nice bright yellow, like so. I'm trying not to. Um, make more than one mark. I'm pr trying to more or less just make a single stroke for each so I don't end up with too many different um, too many different lines that I have to worry about. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm now going to take and remove the marks that I don't want. These ones over here. And I just, uh, using the pointer tool, selected them and deleted them. And now, I'm going to hold down Alt. And the reason I'm holding down Alt is because I click through the paths on top in order to get to the path that I want. 
I know that this is the path that I want because I remember that the, the silhouette was 86 nodes. I can now take this and move this to the top. And uh, it means that I can move this vector path on top of all the other paths. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And select, whoops, select all of my objects. I could also do that with a control A. I'm going to say object um, clip and set. And I bet you it doesn't let me do it. Oh, it does. It, it did. Exactly right. So this is exactly what I want. And you could take anything and put it in the background and you'd be able to um, mask with a single path on top. That 86 node silhouette path was my mask. And as a result, I can make all kinds of crazy things go on in the underneath um, and use a single path in order to clean it all up. I'm actually going to undo this because I thought that uh, I might be able to do something more fun. So I'll select all this and get rid of it. And what I'm going to do now is type using the text tool. And I'll type, um, let's see, I'll get one of my nice quote books that give me a lot of inspiration. Like, There's a quote here from Thoreau that says, It is as hard to see oneself as to look backwards without turning around. And what I'm going to do is I'll use my mouse to create sort of a uh, a shape out of this text to um, fit with this bodily form. So I'm going to take this text, I'll use my text dialog that I got right up here, and I'm going to center it and apply it. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get a preview of the fonts, see if I can get something relatively tight meaning uh, not having a lot of white space between the letter forms, like a title font. that. I love that font, dear Joe. So I'll take that now. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the orientation of the image to a portrait because this is more of a portrait. And again, I'll hit five on my keyboard. And I'll size up this figure. more accurately see it's it's uh, snapping which I don't want it to do so I turned off snapping up here so that I can have fine control of the way it fits to that page 
using my arrow with that selected object to get it to uh, go to the bottom. I'm going to select everything except for that figure so that I can select the text, make it red, bring it to the top, and I'm going to size it up a bit. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the kerning a bit, very specifically the line spacing. I'm going to make it really tight, even tighter than that, in fact. We'll say 50%. So the text is almost, uh, it, not almost, it's running on top of itself. So now I'll double click and Again, affecting the text to make it sort of fit to the torso. And honestly, I'm just going to sort of duplicate some of this text. I don't really care what the text says. I care more about the fact that it's just words and recognizable as such. So with this again, I'm going to hold down Alt so that I can get that figure and bring it to the top. And I'm going to now select all, which I can do by Control A. But I can also do it right here, select all. And I'm going to say object clip sets. And there's my finished piece. Well, maybe not finished. Let's put something in the background to offer some contrast. I'll turn my snapping back on. so that I can have it snap to the edge of the page. I'm going to make this sort of a light tan. I'm going to take that and move it to the bottom, like so. And I'm also going to add a gradient to it, because that's something that I do often. I'm going to choose gradient. Normally you'd be able to see the icon, but I have this at a fairly low resolution. I'm going to choose a, a a uh, circle gradient, a radial gradient, so that it emits uh, light from the center and goes out to dark. And I'm going to keep it on the fill as opposed to the stroke. So here we go. And it's going from uh, red to transparent, which is not what I want. What I actually want is uh, linen color to sort of a darker color. I'm going to add another node here by double clicking and I'm going to make that node linen as well. I'm going to move that out a bit more. Maybe play a bit with the gradient there. there. All right, so first thing I'll do is I'll save it as tomorrow's sketch, which I happen to keep inside Dropbox. And tomorrow, today actually, is the 10th. 
So I'll change it to the tent. Save. And now I'll export. And when I export, I'll p export the page as opposed to everything that's drawn or something I've selected. I want the entire page, which automatically throws the name of the SVG in there, except it replaces the SVG with a PNG. I export. That's done. I close it. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one.